If you've ever had surgery in your life, you've likely had a doctor tell you to count backwards from 10 just to be put to sleep. While under the knife, you expect to feel no pain or at least have no memory of the process. In hindsight, you've never doubted, not even for a minute, the wonders of anesthesia. Whether injected into your bloodstream or inhaled as a gas, administered by a nurse, anesthetist, or dentist, this is because anesthesia has allowed millions of people to receive medical treatments as if routine. But this wasn't always the case. Of all the milestones and achievements in medicine, conquering pain has been one of the most sought after medically induced treatments to prepare patients for surgery. Until the invention of general anesthesia, which makes a patient completely unconscious, unlike simple sedation or regional anesthesia, in the mid 1900s, surgery had been performed only as a last and even desperate resort. Before the introduction of modern anesthetic techniques, it wasn't at all uncommon for medical personnel, nurses, administrative assistant, or anyone else who happened to walk by a surgery room to hear the horrid screams of patients undergoing surgery. Left conscious, patients endured the torture of having their bodies be cut open and probed by doctors and nurses. These patients were beset with unimaginable terror, unspeakable agony, and more than just a considerable risk of death. But achieving painless surgery has been a primary goal for thousands of years, with the search for pain relief and insensibility found in tales of mind-altering states, poisonous plants, and recreational drugs. The earliest recorded attempts to develop a state of general anesthesia are attributed to the ancient writings of Assyrians more than 5,000 years ago. The Assyrians are said to have concocted a herbal sedation recipe around 3400 BCE that called for a psychedelic combination of belladonna, a poisonous plant with psychoactive effects much like heroin and cannabis, also known as marijuana. Meanwhile, the Egyptians of the dynastic period are known to have used opium poppies, which later influenced Greek medicine. Knowledge of the flower's euphoric effects eventually reached the Babylonians, whose empire comprised of lands between Persia, eastward, and Egypt. Much further east, Chinese medical practitioners, also looking for ways to alleviate the pain of their patients, were making serious advancements in coming up with a remedy. One ancient text tells the story of Bian Qiu, a legendary Chinese healer and surgeon of the 2nd century CE. According to the texts, Bian Q performed surgery on patients under anesthesia using a recipe that mixed wine with herbal extracts, which he later called mafisin. This mixture would feign death in patients for days by inducing a state of unconsciousness and partial neuromuscular blockade. Unfortunately, the exact composition of mafisin was lost when Bian Q burned his manuscripts just before his death. The search for the most effective anesthesia thus continued. In the Middle Ages, while Europe was entrenched in a state of intellectual stagnation and going through the dark ages of pharmacology, the Muslim world flourished in sciences, including the field of medicine. With the skills of Arabic and Persian alchemists, physicians from the Middle East became among the first to use oral as well as inhaled anesthetics. In Al-Andalus, which includes a large portion of Spain and Portugal, a late 10th century, early 11th century polymath, Abu al-Qasim al-Zawari, also known as the father of surgery, published his 30-volume Adasrif, on surgery or handwork. In it, he illustrated his research on the use of general anesthesia, becoming one of the first to boil water with herbs like hashish, opium, and c hyacinth to reduce the excruciating pain of surgery. Three centuries later, Ibn al kuf a physician and surgeon from Damascus, Syria, dedicated an entire chapter on pain relief in his book Kitab al-Umda fil Garaha, Basics in the Art of Surgery, including the anesthetic sponge, which he described as being imbued with aromatics and narcotics to place over the patient's nostril during surgical operations. Modern techniques in anesthesia still rely on al kuf's concoction of drugs used in anesthetic sponges today. Opium is a sedative substance spread from Asia to all parts of Europe between the 10th and 13th centuries. One of the first European accounts dates to the 1200 CE when an Italian physician, Theodoric of Lucca, used sponges soaked with opium and mandragora from the mandrake plant for pain relief during surgery, while in England an alcohol-based mixture called dwell was used as an anesthetic. So strong was the concoction that surgeons were given rubbing vinegar and salt to put on the cheekbones of their patients just to rouse them. Dwayle has been recorded in numerous literary sources, including Shakespeare's Hamlet and the John Keats poem, Ode to a Nightingale. Even though plant-based painkillers spread to some parts of Europe, up until the mid-1800s, Western surgeons did little more than offer patients anything but alcohol, opium, or a bullet to bite on to tolerate the agonizing pain and torture of surgery. 
A few patients even chose to write of the torment they experienced as they reawakened in the middle of a procedure. One of the most recognized and vivid records of this terror was by Fanny Burney, a famous English novelist who documented his experience as follows. When the dreadful steel was plunged into the breasts, I needed no injunctions to restrain my cries. I began a scream that lasted unintermittently during the whole time of the incision. So excruciating was the agony, I then felt the knife rackling against the breastbone, scraping it. Patients like Bernie weren't the only ones who suffered. Surgeons are said to have also endured as much, at least in terms of anxiety and distress. A 19th century surgeon from London St. Bartholomew's Hospital compared walking into the operating room to going to a hanging, both of which caused him to vomit and shed tears, especially after witnessing particularly gruesome operations. But on October 6, 1846, a eureka moment in the history of anesthesia occurred. On that tense fall morning in the surgical amphitheater of Boston's Massachusetts General Hospital, a young dentist, William Morton, discovered how small animals passed out and became unresponsive after inhaling sulfuric ether, now known as ethyl ether or simply ether. After a few months, he made history by being the first in the world to publicly demonstrate the use of ether anesthesia by using a glass bulb filled with ether-soaked gauze. This event occurred at what became to be called the Ether Dome, where he successfully removed a vascular tumor from a patient's neck without any sign of distress. As the procedure went smoothly, the patient, Edward Abbott, woke up after the surgery calm and not in pain. One of the surgeons, John Collins Warren, gleefully exclaimed, Gentlemen, this is no humbug. A new era had dawned, as the news, the public demonstration of painless surgery, spread as fast as the ships of the time could carry it. Dr. Oliver Holmes, a 19th century poet and polymath, coined the terms anesthetic and anesthesia in a letter to Morton, deriving these newly christened words from Greek in which an, without, and aesthesia, sensibility, comprise the main components of the new English words. Today, anesthetics have a wide range of consciousness-reducing and pain-killing drugs, such as sevaflurane and isoflurane, and the exact choice of a doctor will depend on the patient's particular needs. The method of general anesthesia has now evolved to the most reliable of all major routine medical procedures in history. It aims to create an unresponsive drug-induced coma or controlled unconsciousness that detaches patients from reality better than sleeping does, with no mindfulness and memory of any part of the events occurring at the time. Despite centuries of intellectual and scientific input, modern medical science still has only the vaguest idea about how anesthetics create a state of unconsciousness. Let's be fair. Anesthesia is a medical miracle. Shrouded in mystery, the science of anesthesia and consciousness seem irrevocably linked. After amnesia, some patients recover their consciousness and memory within hours after the surgery. But for some, it may cause memory loss lasting for days, even months. Medical reports state that people might be conscious during operation, but they simply can't remember it afterwards. To investigate this phenomenon, researchers developed algorithms to understand the biological basics of how brain function is altered in an anesthetized state. By tracking brain activity during general anesthesia, researchers focus on how combinations of drugs distance the patients from the trauma the body is undergoing while minimizing side effects. They've detailed the mechanism underlying the action of modern anesthetics, identifying links between the neural receptors on which the drugs act and patterns of overall brain activity that are linked to changes in neuronal firing. When researchers checked to see if the brain simply turned off during anesthesia, they made a fascinating observation. Instead of a quiet brain, they saw a powerful signal that looked different from any waking state. As the brain regions gradually become inhibited, a slow wave of electrical activity begins to oscillate through the brain. These oscillations change the timing of when the neurons can fire and seem to interrupt standard firing patterns and the ability of different brain regions to communicate with each other. Despite colossal advances in the science of anesthesia, after almost 200 years, we're still waiting for a theory which will explain how consciousness emerges from brain activity and how this brain activity is affected by the various targets of anesthetic action. Until then, it seems we'll be searching for the missing piece of the puzzle which will explain the relationship between the physical substance of our brain and the subjective content of our minds. Now that you've watched the video, share with us your own experience with anesthesia in the comments below.